Cassie, come right in. Thank you. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. So, how are you feeling? Better. Uh, Cassie, Charlie's been coming around to the rectory. He's very worried about you. The children miss you terribly. I know. You're not going to have anything to do with that. Charlie's been to the rectory to talk. He tells me you've been depressed for several years. He noticed. Cassie, it's generally recognized that Catholic women who practice birth control against the teachings of the church are subject to chronic and debilitating depression. Father, I had no choice. My obstetrician said it would be dangerous if I got pregnant again. Oh, but you did have a choice. You could have used rhythm. I used rhythm. The first four years we were married, I had three children. If that's God's will. And if in the course of bringing another soul into the world, you were to... I was to... Uh, that's not necessarily God's will for you. You understand? But if you used rhythm properly and you still became pregnant, there's only one alternative. What's that? You must abstain from marital relations until such time as your doctor feels that you're ready for another pregnancy. Did you tell Charlie that? Yes, and he said that while it would be a hardship, he would be willing to make the sacrifice if it resulted in your getting well. He's had problems with the birth control thing from the beginning. He's a very good man, Charlie. You bet. Everyone says so. So all you need to do is return home and take up your duties as a responsible Catholic wife and mother, and all your problems will fall away like... Cassie, should you be up there? When I was growing up, my mother always felt free to come into my room whenever she wanted. No knock, just bang. The door would open and she'd fly through like a police raid. And I got to thinking how nice it would be when I was grown up and free and the lady of the house. Most little girls dream about marriage and a home of their own. That's very natural. But you see, my idea was that I would finally have a place where I could masturbate in private without my mother bursting through the door. That is not natural. That is downright perverse. What's the matter with you? Maybe I'm crazy. No, you're not crazy. What you are is in danger of losing your immortal soul. And if you think God hasn't heard this conversation, Cassie, you're very wrong. Father Dunhill, do you remember a lady who called you in the middle of the night and said she was going to kill herself? You said pray and call back in the morning. You think she did it, Father? You think she killed herself? Maybe she took a birth control pill and washed it down with a quart of scotch and died of a broken commandment. What do you think, Father? You think she's dead? What do you think? Dr. Hansen? Dr. Hansen, report to obstetrics, please. Destination? Home. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go visit my kids. Cassie? There's one of those AA meetings tonight. I, I thought maybe I'd go there. I don't know, Tink. I I if I do go home to my kids, what do I say to them? That mommy is a crazy lush and needs to be locked up? Or the Father Dunhill is right. Mommy is really wallowing in her own despair and doesn't love them. You'll tell them the truth when you know it. <laughs> when will that be? I'll, um, I'll put down Alcoholics Anonymous just in case. I do love them, Tink. There have been times when with little arms around my neck and a soft cheek next to mine. 
I felt more nearly a woman than ever I felt lying beneath a man. You know what I mean? I think so. I don't have any kids. I um, never had the courage. Well, you better run along, Cassie. You don't want to miss that meeting, do you? do drive like a crazy person. You take it easy. What are you doing in my car? I told Dalton you would take me to see Ralph. She said, okay, so I've been waiting for you. Well, you might have asked me. Why? You don't have any place to go anyway. Oh, you're right. Oh. Okay. Go out Brook Park Road. You have children, don't you, Norma? Are they with your husband? No, they're in a foster home. You know, I still can't figure out how you got Dalton to give you permission to come all the way out here. I didn't. I lied. <laughs> you mean I'm aiding and abetting? Uh-huh. Well, you don't talk, I don't talk. Just keep your mouth shut. Terrific. <sighs> okay, this is it. This is where Ralph? Mm-hmm. You said he comes to visit you. He does. Now it's my turn. Why, he was young, 41. You know, a year before he died, the doctor told him he had cirrhosis of the liver. You know, he warned him to quit drinking, and Ralph quit for three weeks. And then he took it up again. Because <laughs> he said that there were more old, I remember, more old drunks than old doctors. <laughs> you know, I nursed him the best that I could. I used to take his liquor and pour it down the sink. And, but he'd just get some more. And then he'd get drunk and he'd scream that it was against him. Me and the doctor. Maybe we better go on back. You know, he actually died of pneumonia. Yeah. It was a blessing at the end. It really was a blessing. Well, you think maybe we ought to... Are you happy? Are you happy with that? Kid, you might be in the right place. Oh, I was looking for the AA meeting. Well, what do you think this is, a PTA? Well, it could be. And you could be an Alki, but you look too young to me. Don't pay any attention to this nitwit husband of mine, honey. If you've got a problem with booze, this is the place for you. Hi, I'm Alice, and I'm... Yes, I know. I'm Cassie Barrett. Hey, is this the one from the bug farm? You're Cassie. Come on, let me take your coat. Well, when did they let you out, kid? Or did you escape? Shut up, John. Come on, just because he got sober doesn't mean he got smart. Why don't you just go start the meeting, all right? No charge. Uh, that wasn't me in the hospital last week. So I noticed. My friend Kara and I... No explanations we were... needed, really. Just as long as you're here because you want to, that's all that matters. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that, either. Well, then you take as long as you want to decide. Come on, let's get some coffee and we'll grab a seat. Ready? Sure. All right, everybody, would you please take your seats? 
I'll tell you the truth, Alice. What I could really use right now is a drink. So could everybody in this room from time to time. That's why we come together. Everybody, would you please take a seat? Our speaker for the evening is waiting. It gives me pleasure to introduce our speaker for tonight, Mr. Ted R. Six years ago, it was at the gentle suggestion of a judge who said something about 30 meetings or 30 days. Of course, my wife had left me by then, took the kids with her. In my condition, it was three weeks before I noticed they'd gone. <laughs> Years ago, and I haven't had Is that funny? Since. Not at first. It takes a while. And I'm happy. And for the first time in my life, I'm comfortable with myself. Does it work, Alice? Well, I see Does it really work? Out there it surely well, does, like if you right. wanted to. You know, the old goat and me. You join us. We haven't touched a drop in 13 years. You'll never again have to 13 years? Alone. You mean you have to keep... Going to these meetings forever? Oh, no. Only as long as you want to stay sober. Someone to share the <laughs> Don't worry. You're going to make it. How Someone could you tell? You got the look. Stretching endlessly before you. When you need us, we're here. You're going to get well, aren't you? Well, I don't know what well means, Kara. Weller than Caliguire or Ludwig. All I know is... I think I may have stumbled on something at that meeting this evening. You're gonna get well and leave me in this place. Well, what about you? You want to get well, too? Yeah, sure, but I can't. Sure you can. You're young and bright. You've had more survival training than a paratrooper. Look, I can't get well because I won't see Alexander again. He'll just charge me. And I love him. Oh, come on, Kara. Don't be silly. The man is Stuffy and humorless and pompous. And gorgeous. You can't deny he's gorgeous. No, I can't deny that. I mean, if you're attracted to the type. You love him, too. Well, of course I do. Well, I thought you loved your Tom Donnelly. No, no. I'm in love with Donnelly. Oh, I love Charlie. Oh. And what about Alexander? Well, every woman loves her shrink, Kara. It's called transference. Well, do you have to be such a hog about it? Why don't you find some other shrink to love? Because I adore him. I really adore him. just uh, overwhelmed with grief. She's lost her mother. I couldn't lose my mother if I had a sex change operation and moved to Cairo. You see, she's overcome. Will you walk, Carl? No, I won't. Edwin, will you bring my limousine around front, please? Are you sure you ladies belong here? I do. She doesn't. Kara, one lousy AA meeting and you're ready to be the Miss Mental Health poster girl. Kara, what are you still doing here anyway? Why don't you go back to your Charlie and your kitties and your little house in the suburbs? Because you want to know what? You make me sick. Uh, 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 one moment, please. 